I first met my co-host when she had a syndicated talk show all about sex. Sex with Sue. Sue McGarvey. And I am the Milkman John Milky, host of The Milkman Show. Heard on radio stations across North America. And my home base, BlastTheRadio.com. We're glad you're here. Let's get turned on. We are recording audio. We are recording video. The podcast is on the air. Hi, Sue McGarvey. I'm going to talk like this through the entire podcast. All right. Well, I've been practicing my Marilyn Monroe talk because I have a new, I have a new mini me puppet. I have, I have Mulva the Vulva puppet and my friend Deborah is getting me a mini, a slutty me, like a really slutty me. A slutty Sue puppet. And I need to come up with a voice. And oh, you know, yeah, I, can, okay. I can do the little girl voice for a long time, but I, no, I didn't don't do that. want that. I know. I wanted no, that's the, weird. I know. I wanted the Marilyn Monroe, and she apparently talks really slowly. And I don't know if I can do it indefinitely. That's pretty good. It has to be different. And it's really breathy, and you you talk on the exhale. Uh, anyway, I'm going to work on it. So <laughs> I'll, pu- uh, my- I'll put you in touch with Ed the Sock, and you can figure out where that voice comes from, et cetera. Because I'll tell you, uh-huh. when you talk when you talk to the person who is Ed's right-hand man, you wouldn't know it's the same guy. You wouldn't know it's the same guy. Nope. I have met I have met Ed's right hand man. Ah, yeah. yes, yeah. you have. That's right. Yes. I knew that. I knew that. Back in the day when I was in Toronto at Much Music. Yes. Very nice man. And I remember I was in a conversation with you two recently, too. I should have known that. Anyway, yeah. um, we got a lot of ground to cover here on Turned On, the podcast. Um, Sue is in her usual place, her naughty corner um, at home. I am in the BTRV for mental health. So this is an RV that is going to be traveling around um, to live on locations at businesses, to various community events. When you see it, uh, if you would want to have a conversation about mental health and share some of your journey and your experiences, that's what the BTRV is. And I'm living here for the week uh, just to get it up and running and make sure that everything works. So the podcast is part of it. So welcome to the BTRV for mental health. Yes. And it's going to be great. So excited. I'm going to be, we're going to be able to come together, come together. <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about it. And um, yes, there is a bedroom, but that's that's a topic. Well, actually, that perhaps that's a topic for this podcast, um, but not yet. We want to begin with this. Why women cheat. Yep. So the quick story is once upon a time, I was I a sex therapist in Ottawa. And I've mentioned before that Ottawa was the number one place in the world for Ashley Madison cheaters. And they figured that out when the whole list was hacked. Yep. So the Guardian in the UK, I had um, Reuters call me because I made a comment about it. Anyway, I was a sex therapist in Ottawa and it went around the world. My mother's like, so what do you know about Ashley Madison? I'm like, oh, I was invited to their Christmas party and they used to sponsor my show. And I hung out with their CEO and named after the two most common girls the year it came out. Anyway, the story. Oh, is that the- how it got its name? I didn't uh-huh. know that. Okay. Ashley and Madison, right. the year it came out were the two most common and it was all run by guys and they wanted they wanted men to think it was run by women. And, you know, the quick story is that they, they saw that 30% of, of people who are on single sites are married. They wanted to go after that 30%. So anyway, so they started Ashley Madison and then they did, they've been doing a quite a bit of research. You know, they've, they've come down quite a bit from their heyday. At one point it was in the top three biggest websites, singles websites, or, you know, dating websites in the world. Hmm. And it's it's the place for people to have an affair. It's life and sh- life is short, have an affair is kind of their right. tagline. Right. And so they've they've researched why women cheat, and it's been followed up by a um, an interesting article in the New York Times about why women cheat and story about it, you know that women want emotional fulfillment that they may not be getting, and that's fair because I think sometimes men want emotional fulfillment, but it was as much about the sitting at a you know, sitting over a drink and dangling your shoe from your toe and flirting, you know, using your finger on the rim of the wine glass and flirting with somebody, which is why you need to take your wife out and flirt with her because women were wanting that. They wanted number two was sexual inconsistency. And I think that's that pleasure gap. Um, I put a, a really interesting interesting YouTube thing up about women today on the the duckling Facebook group. And I'll put it up on, you know, so if you wanted to see the, we are the ducklings.com. Mm-hmm. And it was talking about how a lot of single women 
are deciding that they need to get laid first. <laughs> they want to know if the sex lines up before they'll give them emotional consistency. Okay. Before they start talking, right. it's like, let's get right, let's get naked right off the bat. And if that part lines up, then we can start talking about the rest of the stuff <laughs> versus the other way around. And the last one is Why is that funny? Why is that funny? I don't know, because I think it's kind of interesting. You get over here and service me, and then we can decide whether we can have conversations or right? our values line up. And yeah. Which makes sense, know. and yet it cracks me up. Anyway. It okay. cracks you up. Um, yep. the, uh, the last one was resentment about housework. That if women are always doing the housework, that they want to just play. They want an adventure. They want excitement. They want to, you know, be taken to a nice hotel. They want, they want to get laid differently. They want to have a sexy shower. They want... But they, and they don't want to have to clean up. They I don't blame think them. That if they have to do all the cooking, cleaning, laundry, child care, try not to stick to the floor, then they are done. Yeah. So, Nobody so, wants to be stuck doing that. No. So they were coming up with really, I thought, really lame ways to help, you know, solve this, you know, more, you know, this is more than light a candle. This is, you know, face-to-face -face meditation and eye gazing and working on intimacy. And I think those are all good. But I think if you are resentful about housework, not getting emotionally fulfilled and not having orgasms, a little bit of face-to-face -face eye contact is not going to solve the problem if you're well down the path to having an affair. Anyway. <laughs> and that is why women cheat. A little synopsis with Sue McGarvey here on Turned On, the podcast. Up next, when people talk about sex, they flourish. Wow, we must flourish weekly you and me oh, Sue. we we are we are flourishing you, you yeah. must you must be on flourish overload doing <laughs> what you do well it's this idea that um you know we're starting to starting to strive for greater social well-being right so dealing with sexual hang-ups is one of those things and however you feel about Gwyneth Paltrow and I am not a fan nope um no I'm not a fan I I I, I as I I no I'm not a fan let's leave it at that but she, I, I mean a, a vagina scented candle why well it's just it's the there's this great thing about how she wrote about how women needed to do this and when she was you know getting your child care help and whatever and talking about her maid and i just was like you're not you have no understanding of you're what gwyneth like. paltrow you don't let that's that's an awesome opportunity for someone else when you're gwyneth paltrow and you're a singer and you're a, a movie star why do you go there well, she she just made other women feel who don't have full time live in help and a maid and a, a, you know a landscaper and three nannies feeling inadequate and I that was it I I, I always thought she was she was flaky at the best of times but anyway yep. goop, goop at least they're talking about sex they're talking about it which you know give her credit that is the thing I, I at least she keeps bringing up the conversation and it's the first time in this generation talking about you know, what is about sexual pleasure? You know, we're going to be positive and, and confident knowledge, you know, knowledge is pleasure. And, you know, being there, there, there were certainly some interesting, interesting bits in this research. Okay. And well, one last thing, the lioness vibe, <laughs> which they talked about people talking about sex, which is not only just talking about it, but it's sensors on the vibrator that measure pelvic floor movement. And I know. So it Wait, tells what? you it tells you the vibrator is now having, having a two way conversation. I thought that like was that. A... <laughs> yeah, well, it, it gives you gives you readouts to your phone and it tells you how strong your contractions are. Oh, or oh, orgasms. I, 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 I followed a woman on. I don't even know how I found her. Um, I certainly <laughs> followed her on OnlyFans for a while because she was doing exactly that. Uh, she's Canadian, but she goes to drive throughs like Starbucks, Tim's, McDonald's, whatever else. And she's live streaming. And people, I guess, have control over whatever insertable toy she's wearing. And on the screen, you see a graph of just how intense that's what that is then. I thought that was yeah. just how 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 much you know crazy vibrations the vibrator no, no, was putting no, out. No, 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 no. The lion is okay. five. I think, we, I think we all need to order one. I should again, another company that should be sponsoring us. We should find out about that. Let's get at the very least, let's get some lioness vibes and like we can live stream all right. Sunday. I'm sure the BTRV for mental health can take a side road and go, John. <laughs> He's like, I'm not saying anything. I'm saying nothing. 
Science. It's all in the name of science, of course. It's like reading. What, what happens in the BTRV bedroom stays in the BTRV bedroom. <laughs> all right. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's turned on the podcast available on Apple, Spotify, Google. Um, subscribe so you get the latest episodes pushed to your phone. Uh, also available on your smart speaker. And if it's easier for you, just go to blasttheradio.com. We post it there every single week. Let's talk oral sex and how it is now the leading cause of throat cancer. Yep. So and a quick story. When my son was in grade eight, I dragged him down to the pediatrician and said, roll up your sleeve. You're getting your Garnasil shot for HPV. And he's like, why? Because he says, I'm the only boy in my class. And I'm like, shut up and roll up your sleeve because you need to get it because you're a carrier and you can get anal cancer and you can get throat cancer. Well, it's now become epidemic, especially in the U.S. and places where they do not have every, you know, grade eight girl getting their Garnasil shot. And still having a lot of people, especially from different countries or a little older, like you and I were never getting getting, getting those shots when we were in middle school. No, it's a whole new conversation that it's I wasn't aware was even happening. Right. Yeah. So if you are, you know, if you are 35 or older, you didn't get it. And so right. if you haven't gone yourself and gotten it, you need to, right? It's it's expensive if you don't have it under your benefits, but it's three needles over nine months. But if you are giving head and if you've had more than six partners, you're nine times more likely to get throat cancer and it has to do with HPV in your throat. Run those numbers past us again, please. One okay. More time. So, so if you have more than six partners, you've given head to, okay. right. And it's both men and women. So however you, however you suck, lick, whatever you do, right, right, right. That you have nine times more likely to get throat cancer because the virus it's, it's the only it's the only cancer-based virus. So women get cervical cancer because they have HPV, human papilla virus that causes that. And it's also the virus that causes genital warts. And All some right, people's so bodies get rid of them after a couple of years of your immunity gets rid of them. Other six partners, people, nine times yep, yep, uh, yep, the yep. chances. Okay. Wow. Yep. Yep. And it's, you know, it's one of those things for boys. And even if you're, you know, you think, oh, I'm packing a lunch and it's not a big deal. Well, that's the chance you take. Not only that, but you can get yeast infections in your sinus cavities. Now, I know a lot of guys are going to, you know, get squirmy when I say this, but what if head is happening with a condom on? Far more likely to not have it, right? Condoms right. are safe, except right. that HPV is a really, really, really small virus. Okay. And it often is around the base. Like a lot of times people, even with the condoms, they'll get HPV is also, you know, one that causes genital warts and you'll get genital warts at the base of your penis or on your outer labia, not where the condom was because the virus is, you know, is doing this, you know, skin to skin. Right. So where the condom is, fine, but it's the, the peripheral. Okay, you may not get it on sense. the tip of your penis, but you may get it on your right. testicles. You may get it on your base. You may get it in your pubes. You may get it all of those places. And either way, in your throat, you know, and the truth is, who the hell gives oral sex really, unless you're a prostitute with a condom? Like even the flavor condoms don't taste very nice. And, you know, that's true. It's, it's Listen, one of those things that's easy to I catch. didn't say I understood it. I, I just, I, I know that it does happen and I, you know, there's certainly, you know, a lot of guys out there who go, why? Well, safe sex. Like if you're going to a glory hole or you're mm -hmm. going to, yeah, you're going to, uh, you know, see a, a prostitute or, you know, a sex worker is probably the better term is not probably is the better term. And I apologize for the other one. Um, then yeah, condoms are probably in and, use and or should you're be. you're germy, right? If you're at a, if you're at a glory hole and you're giving head and that's your thing, cool. But understand though, there's going to be a lot of, you know, what they call flora, sort of their germs going into your mouth. If right. you've had your Garnasil shot, odds are you're not getting throat cancer. You may get what they call the clap, which is gonorrhea in your throat, which is green and foamy. But, you know, none of those guys are wearing a condom. And, you wow. know, I'm not, say I'm not saying don't do it if it's your, if you, you know, if that's your jam, who the hell am I to say? What I am saying is, you know, most of the time oral sex does not cause STIs. And I would say that to high school students, you know, if you have a choice, give ahead, but make sure you have your garnish still shot. That's ultimately the, the gist of this. You and I have very different conversations with high school students. <laughs> yes. All right. We have a listener question. Uh, are we allowed to mention this listener's name? Yes, we are allowed to mention this listener name. She's All right. only given us a first name. So yay. 
Hello, Lucy. Thank you for your question. Um, inspired, or, or or it comes at a time, uh, I guess, ironically, that Megan Trainer is also talking about this. So, painful sex, and I guess Megan Trainer is with a guy who is um, uh, generously endowed. Yes, her husband Ryan Trainer. Um, no, no, I don't think you're, that's her husband's name. Anyway, Mister Trainer. Guy Pateas. Yeah, thirty four. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, uh, trainer's vagina is little and Sabera's penis is big. And the okay. winner replied, yes, it's the point where I'm saying, is it all in? And he's like, no, just the tip. So her lips uh, really are moving. Your lips are moving. I wish you could make Daryl smaller. It's painful, yeah. dude. She said, noting that she went to the doctor and learns that she experiences vaginismus, a spasm of the muscles around the vagina that occurs against your will and makes the vagina very narrow and pre- can prevent sexual activity. Oh. She was told, which is true, but after she's like, it feels stingy and burny. And so what happens is basically the muscles contract and it's almost like having it. And then, and then you, you get touched and you get banged and it's like, ow, 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 ow. So vaginismus is a painful spasm of the vaginal muscle. Yes. And it okay. usually comes from being, you know, and, and, and when you have pain, you immediately tighten up and then you try and shove something the size of a tree trunk up there and you're like ow 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 she said that if she has sex so not not indifferent to anal the sex then day. not yes. indifferent to anal sex then when a lot of people they just they they go and they're like trying to put a pile on in there instead of starting out with something you know much smaller and lubed and gentle and working their way up and the difference that you know and and the anus doesn't stretch so you have to open it the vagina does stretch but the muscles can clamp down and she's like ah and they've mm. tried, she said, she's like, she's tried, um, you know, different ways. She said, I've all tried different angles and in different positions. And she said, each one is worse than the other, especially getting on top, which she describes as a nightmare. Wow. <laughs> she's okay. like, Daryl, I have to work today and I can't walk. Um, anyway, it's, it's so it, for a lot of women, you know, you know, and I, I've just, I just done all these TikToks, coffee with Sue, if you want to follow me yes, about, of course. yes. Cause you can't say sex on TikTok. Anyway, oh, God forbid. It's, size. A, it's amazing what you can't say on TikTok. The more I get onto TikTok. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have to be really careful. Anyway, the size is such a topic. I keep getting calm, you know, talking about how do you measure your size? It's, you know, at the top from the base of your, uh, I ask your, your, you that all the time and I still I, don't know what the correct answer how do you, is. How do you go along the top I'm, of the ridge? I'm going with whichever one benefits me the best in the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. Okay. And different kinds of sizes, but I'm telling you, Megan Trainer or our stories from Lucy, cause she's saying Sue and Milky, I've got this really big new lover and he's big. And she says, I get this sinking feeling every time he takes off his pants, it's going to hurt. Mm. And, you know, she went, you know, Megan Trainer goes to her doctor and she goes, what do you mean sex isn't supposed to hurt? I thought it was supposed to hurt. I was like, no, it's not supposed to hurt. It's supposed to feel awesome. And if it hurts, what's going on? It may hurt the first time, but after that, it should be, you know, this is great. And sometimes it can be, this is mediocre, but it shouldn't hurt. All right. Thank you, Megan Trainer. Thank you, Lucy, as well. It's funny. Yeah, absolutely. She says, her, she says her pussy's broken, and I'm like, oh. no, Meg, no, Megan. You just we need to get we need to get you some jade eggs. We need to get you some dilators. We need to get oh, and one of the tricks I do is go get that Robaxa set, the muscle relaxants. Okay. Stick it up, put it in lubricants, shove it up there. Let them let the muscle relax and open you. Helps. It really I does. suppose if you're in an area where it is legal, gummies, et cetera, would probably benefit that as well. There's some THC massage oil. Sure. You can just use it as a lube and squirt it on up. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Like a little local anesthetic, if you will. A little local anesthetic, you guys. <laughs> hey, if you got a question for Sue, her email address is as follows. Sue at sexwithsue.com. Find us. All right. This question has been asked uh, since high school. We, we, we talked about high school a few minutes ago. What is the right number of sexual partners? We're talking sexual past here. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming someone's on the dating scene and they have this conversation. How many partners have you had? You know, gosh, what's the right number here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because it gets to a point where am I a slut or am I experienced? Like, you know, on both sides of the equation, male, female and everything in between. You know, like what is what is the right number, Sue? Well, it's not more than three partners in the last year, which is average for people who are single right now. So, you know, my first, my attitude is if you want to know, piss off, it's none of your business, but they see, you know, if you've got this new partner and it's really bugging them, yeah, 
I'd say, hey, you got a problem anyway. But the idea is one to six partners is ideal. Not enough. In, in, in a lifetime? Yes. They're saying okay. your past partners, one to six. If you've okay. never had one, that's not ideal because, or if you only had one or two, they're like, eh, you don't have enough experience. You may not. And it doesn't have a lot of appeal as a sexual partner. You know, you may be valued as a life partner, but not as a sexual partner. And more than six, there apparently is, especially for guys, a bit of a thing. But most men have had nine who are single have had 9.1 past partners. I don't know how you have a point one. That was the fuck you in the hall. kind of. I mean, Sue, I could draw you a picture. <laughs> I'm a point one. Listen, listen, it was a Saturday night. Drinks were involved. Anyway. Okay. So you, somebody, got, somebody got a little handsy, but it's just a point one. There right. you go. But more, more than three partners in the last year, you're still considered, you know, there's, the, it was, so they asked people what the ideal was and, and you started to go down after you've had three in the last year. And I went, all right, well, you know, I, I have, we're ducklings. Like I have a lot of friends who are like, well, how Sue, that was the last 24 hours. What are you talking about? And I'm right. like, I would shut up about it. And it's unfortunate that we're still at a stage where you have to do that. And, you know, as opposed to celebrating, I'm, I, I just talked to my friend, Julie Dugas, who's a, uh, is a local comedian. I love Julie. Isn't Hi, she Julie. She celebrates yeah. her sluttiness. And I say, we need to do the slut show. I have pictures of Julie's boobs on my phone. And it's not like I went looking for them. Most they people were have pictures of Julie's boobs on yeah. their phone. Yeah. yeah. Julie came over to do a podcast and um, was very proud to show me her boobs. Mm -hmm. Her new yep. ones? Her updated ones? I don't know. So she just had them. She just had them redone. So uh, we all well, got Julie. You know, Julie, you need to find your friend John Milky, and uh, it is time to update the boob shot. I think that's true. Anyway, I keep thinking we need to do a slut show. You know, okay. really, where we just celebrate comedy, burlesque, you know, drag, just celebrating your absolute sluttiness. I think I uh, know for this. This is either. this is how you get me in drag again, isn't it? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I, think, I think that would be so much fun. Let's do a slut show. Let's <laughs> let's work on that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Stop I thought that's what, tell I thought that's what I was doing off. every day. I yeah, thought that them, was my every day. <laughs> tell them to piss off if they uh, if they want to know your number because it's really nobody's bloody business. Joking aside, okay. Um, the relationship you're in and the lifestyle you're in as well, that number can be very different. Like if I'm if if I am you know in an open relationship, that's what I pursued. That's what I've ended up in. We met each other, you know, at a swingers party type thing, and this is kind of when we, you know, I, I think there's probably a little bit more forgiveness and understanding that, you know, just by virtue of us being more open minded as humans, we probably have a higher number versus someone. And I hate to be the stereotype, but you know, you meet at a church event. Mm hmm that they may not have that. And that's fair. That's I think saying. we're talking right. about normal people. This was a sort of what's going on across the board, people who followed this and you're right. It's not people whose sex is a hobby, like people who've met either at a lifestyle event or at a yeah. sex positive group. You are, you know, you are out there going to bridge classes and somebody's randomly asked you, what's your number? You know, the average, you know, you want to be between one and six, who knows? The wrong answer is three to time, I suppose, right? Just asking for a <laughs> Just friend. Just asking for a friend. Yeah. And finally on the podcast today, Sue, um, you have some interesting information regarding testosterone. Well, it, it was this study, and I, I had to read it twice. But in China, I guess they can get away with, they don't have an ethics committee or something. I don't know. Shocking. Shocking, but they uh, they were giving testosterone shots to you know to people in their twenties, trying to figure out if, te if testosterone actually improves pro-social learning. So this is you know you're picking up social cues. You know women are hitting on you, um, whether or not you're you know you're you know you're popular. You're not you know you know that that sort of social cues about being in an environment. Right. And sometimes, you know, those nerdy guys, the ones I keep pulling aside that hadn't been explained to in high school, that this is what women are looking for. This is how you dress, you know, that kind of coaching. Okay. And some people pick it up really easily and some people don't. And apparently it may have to do with testosterone levels because the study was if they gave these young men testosterone shots, they were far more likely to pick up on social cues. Okay. And be more open to pro-social learning, which I thought was like, what? 
anyway, that is the study. So if you are thinking that you are absolutely clueless and you're not on the spectrum because that's a legitimate reason for not for being absolutely clueless, you may want to have your testosterone levels checked because that may be a correlation between what's going on. So what is it that the testosterone is doing them? Is it just, you know, it's it's a more fevered pitch within your system, therefore you're more in tune with it, therefore you're more excited, and, you know, that ambition is is driving you to just be more aware of the little things you need to be doing better at? It is, testosterone does a lot of things for us. It actually, you know, it, it, it gives us our ambition it gives us our, you know, sort of the bounce in our step. But again, it's also what men have evolved to, which is to track, you know, wounded deer across the savanna and be able to focus. And sometimes if your testosterone is low, you can't focus on cues, which are, you know, like deer droppings in the, you know, in the great wilderness of Algonquin Park, because you're trying to find something that will get you fed. Right. I, you know, I, you know, that's what it does. So I just think it's gobstopping that a, that if they can give somebody a shot and they're more likely to get social cues, what an interesting study. Mm. And I can't see anybody doing it around here. So we had a, the Chinese published it. And it, I think it's really interesting. I, you know, somebody want to try some testosterone cream and see if you're far more likely to be able to pick that up. <laughs> or, or something like DHEA, which you can get over the counter, at, you know, Amazon.com or at Walgreens in the States, and it will up your boost your testosterone levels a little bit. I'm just picturing someone grabbing some testosterone cream after they hear it on this podcast and suddenly realizing, you know what? I'm not buying my clothes at Giant Tiger anymore. I'm off to Old Navy. I'm really <laughs> stepping up my game, Sue. Something like that. So Something like that. All right. I'm gonna look into. I'm gonna look into it more because I think it's right. like that stuff fascinates the hell out of me. I know but it does. I know. I know. And I'm always fascinated with the conversations that you have here on Turned On, the podcast. Uh, hey, if you got a question for Sue, you've got comments on the podcast, we're on Google, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on iHeart, we're on Amazon Music. Uh, ask your smart speaker to play Turned On, the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. What's the email address, Sue? Sue at sexwithsue.com. Or to another conversation a week from now.